Hello and welcome to the Cuts Feature Detail. The Feature Detail is a supplement to the manual that every user of Solid Steel Parametric for Autodesk Inventor has available as a PDF. The manual describes everything in more detail, but it is recommended to follow the video step by step while doing it yourself in the software. For those who don't know, you can also try it all out with the Free Express version. If you haven't already, please go straight to our website to get your version of Solid Steel Parametric. In this video you will learn how to work with the face cut, the miter cut, the cope cut, and the remove cuts functions. Let's start with the face cut. Here we have a small assembly of rectangular tubes that we will use to demonstrate the various possibilities of face cutting. Unlike in real life, cuts in solid steel parametric can also extend components, which we will see in the first example. We open the face cut dialog and can define the cut by making two selections. The first selection is the face on which to cut, and the second selection is the beam to be cut. We see the message cut is not possible, and this blue arrow. The arrow shows the direction of the face normal which is also the direction of the cut. We can change the direction by activating the invert option. The arrow now points in the opposite direction, and we can see in the preview that the cut can be performed correctly. We can confirm and see the result with our beam extended by the cut. We repeat the steps on the opposite side. I want to cut on this face and this profile. Preview fits. We can confirm again. Next, we want to cut on this face with this profile. We can already see in the preview that this is not the result we want. We deactivate the invert option again, see the correct preview and can confirm. One more time on the opposite side. Cut on this face with this profile and confirm. We continue with the diagonal. Here we also take a look at the gap option. The steps are exactly the same as before. Select the face and the profile and we see the preview of the diagonally cut beam. If we enter a value here for the gap, the cut will be shifted by this value. I'm going to set it back to 0 mm and confirm. This corner is a special case because we can also cut profiles on multiple faces with the face cut. This means that I cut first on this face, and then also on this face. The result is a profile, I'm going to open it up, that has a multiple miter. We can also see here that each cut is a separate cut feature in Inventor. This means that solid steel parametric works in the background from the assembly level to the part level and performs the editing there. The advantage of this type of processing is that no external reference is created from this part to any of the other parts. Okay, after this little excursion into the part level, we come to the next cutting function, the miter cuts. Again, we have a prepared assembly. We will look at this corner first. Of course, we switch to the solid steel tab and open the miter cut dialog. The function expects two primary selections, this time the two beams involved in the cut. So we select these two profiles and get a preview of the miter cut. Again, we have the option to define a gap if we want. The second option would be to force an angle, for example 70 degrees. This will tilt the miter accordingly, but this makes no sense here or in most other cases, so I delete my entry. Okay, we can confirm and the cut is executed. Let's take a look at the second side. Here we have the case where two profiles of different sizes are to be joined. In this case, the software automatically adjusts the cutting angle so that we get a clean matching cut surface. As with all dialogues this also applies here. If we confirm with the green plus, the dialog remains open. If we confirm with execute, the dialog is closed. So much for the miter cuts. Let's move on to the next category, the cope cuts. New topic, new assembly, new tool dialog. The cope cut has the special nature that there is of course a certain complexity due to the ability to select a beam that will be machined on the geometry of a second beam, our tool beam. As a user, you don't even notice the complex processes going on in the background. Everything is as you would expect. Here in the close-up, we can already see a cope cut, and here in the dialog we can see that the second side is activated. But we don't need it here because the attached beam is smaller than the tool beam. We can set all the parameters as we like and of course we can choose whether the corner should be a chamfer, a rounding, or a hole. We can also add a gap here if we like. Okay, we can confirm the first cope cut, let's move on to the next one. The dialog is still active, so we can immediately select that we want to machine this beam on this tool beam. 
Here, for example, we can change the type of corner and confirm immediately. The parameters entered are remembered from the last use. This is the case for all solid steel functions and speeds up the work. Now let's move on to the third beam, which I'll enlarge first to show you a few more functions. If you have not seen our video on placing and modifying beams, it is linked in the video description, and in our tutorials playlist you will find more videos that make it easy to get started with solid steel parametric. If we now select the two beams in the cope cut dialog, we can see in the preview that it was automatically detected that a cope cut is required at the top and bottom. I load the default values that will be applied to both sides and unhide the second side. This would allow us to define both sides independently, as you can see here with the different corners. As an alternative, you can simply check the symmetric option to control both sides with just one set of parameters. The last option shown here in the dialog is only interesting for diagonally connected beams and has to do with subsequent processing. Briefly sketched. For diagonally cut beams, the cut faces are also diagonal, but processing machines often only cut the beams orthogonal to the surface. If this option is enabled, the generated cuts will be modified so that they can be processed on the machines. Of course, with cope cuts, the machining operations are also performed at the part level, no external references are used, and they are also parametric. This brings us to the next part. Of course it must be possible to remove cuts that have been added. Here in the prepared assembly, different types of cuts are combined and the tool of choice for this task is as you might expect, the remove cut feature. There are two ways to find existing cuts. For example, if I select this beam, the cope cut is displayed here. This is logical because there is only one cut on this beam which we could now remove by clicking on the red minus. However, we can also select this beam here and a list of all the cuts involved in this beam will be displayed directly. We can now display these cuts by highlighting them. For example, if I select this face cut, the area where the cut was made is shown on the far right. With the miter cut, we can see that the second profile is also selected, just like with the cope cut. It is not easy to see with this face cut, but here the selected area is also displayed in a slightly lighter blue color. For example, I now select this cut, click on the red minus and the cut is completely removed. If you want to see how easy it is to automatically make cuts using the end plate feature, just check out the video suggested here. Until next time, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.